Hello, Dominic here. I am the Festival Director of the Bournemouth Writing Festival and looking forward to seeing you on the 26th, 27th and 28th of April 2024 in Bournemouth Town Centre for our second writing festival. Now, last year at our inaugural writing festival, we did things called genre breakfasts and they were super popular and we're going to be repeating them again. So what happens is we have a host um, in a local cafe in Bournemouth Town Centre and they start at nine o'clock and the idea is, is that each breakfast um, is concentrated around one genre of writing. So it could be poetry, it could be uh, book fiction, it could be fantasy, it could be crime writing, historical fiction, whatever it might be. Um, and the idea is if you write in that genre, you go to that particular cafe and meet other writers writing in that genre. And as I said, last year, it was really popular. People were meeting up afterwards, had little WhatsApp groups, etc. So check the website because new ones are being added. And also um, you'll see which cafe is going to be at. So those are going to be on the Saturday and Sunday of the festival at 9 a.m. Very excited today to talk to Miriam San Marco, who has a talk happening on Saturday um, of the writing festival. Now, Miriam is a poet, promoter and creative writing facilitator. And as the Bournemouth Poet Laureate, Miriam has been leading a creative writing and development program for local writers. She also founded Word Makers and Silence Breakers, a collection of wandering wordsmiths, vagabond, verbalizers <laughs> and rhyming rebels. That's a mouthful and a half. Check out her Facebook page, Word Makers and Silence Breakers. There's lots of different things happening throughout the year. So hello, Miriam. Hi, I'm really chuckling about the Word Makers intro because uh, Matt uh, Miles wrote it and uh, is designed to uh, uh, to make you enunciate, you know, like things that you wouldn't, you know, so it's kind of purpose for it. You did really well. <laughs> it is a bit of a tongue twister. So Miriam cur curated our poetry hunt last year, and that was a collection of different poems that local poets um, created uh, in different uh, formats, really. There was an audio one, there was um, uh, written ones, and there was also uh, a poem a treasure map, <laughs> which was great. Oh, that was awesome. It was, it really was. And what we did was we hid them around local cafes, um, shops and restaurants in Bournemouth Town Centre for people to find and again it was it was really really successful so we're delighted to have Miriam back uh, in helping with the writing festival this year. Now we only kind of scratched the surface with the poetry hunt and what I found out was that there's a massive poetry community in Dorset so we are doing a lot more um, for poets and um, in this year's festival so we actually have a poetry hub where on the Saturday uh, we're going to have lots of talks as well as um, free poetry activities for you to try completely for free. Uh, we also have writing on the beach and at the bandstand in Lower Gardens we also have a poetry machine where Beth Calverley will be writing poems for you for free and surrounding Beth, um, Judy and Mark from the University of Winchester will be bringing your old school typewriters where you can clack away and write your own poems. So lots of poetry stuff happening. Um, as I said, there's going to be talks in the avenue and Miriam is going to be um, holding one of those talks uh, at 2.30 p.m. In, um, at the avenue on Saturday the 27th of April. And the title of her um, of her talk is Write Your Poetry Manifesto. And we're going to be talking about that in a little while. But first, Miriam, tell us, how did you get into poetry? It's so um it, it, it's a, a long story I guess but I'm gonna give you like the highlights um I started reading very very early um before I went to school I could read and write um and uh, it, it, books and libraries have always been um my sanctuary or my safe place and I used to um, truant school to spend my time all day in the library and read um, and, and also write little stories um, and I was fascinated by uh, a certain generation of poets, uh, Arthur Rimbaud, Baudelaire, Verlaine, 
uh, Byron, uh, Mary Shelley, you know, like that era fascinated me. Um, but I didn't write poetry then. I wrote uh, fiction and storytelling, and also I did a little bit of very small, short play. And, and it was only just, it was never as a profession or never as a, I didn't have any intentions. I was just writing because I enjoyed it. And, and life was hard and led me to many things. And then in, um, let's say, w when um, I had um, young kids, uh, um, about like 15 years ago, uh, I was doing a project um, where I work uh, called Jericho Arts. And the idea of this project, I worked in uh, a mental health in a, in a house where people were really unwell and, and I worked there as a sport worker. And the idea of the project was to create a peer support group for people who had mental health problems. Um, and I led that um, and taught people uh, mixed media arts, uh, mosaic, all kinds of things, and then got funded for this. And then during that course, people said, we want to do writing. And I thought, well, I could teach that, but I'm not very good. So I'll look for someone. This led me to meet a poet, which I interviewed. I interviewed three poets that wanted to work with me on this. And uh, the one that I employed and met um, was incredibly inspiring and, and said, why don't you write? And I thought, OK, well, I will. And then I sent him a poem and am I allowed to swear, Dominic? <laughs> uh, well, I'm not sure if I can stop you, but um, I, can bleep myself. I, I can bleep myself. But I sent uh, this poet a poem, you know, in a message. My first poem that I said to myself, this is a poem. And, uh, and, and his feedback was, swear words hell <laughs> you know uh, and then and then send us a message like carry on you know and i did and he took me to an open mic night um called um the platform uh, which used to be at the mad cucumber back then and i performed some poems there and i don't know it blew my mind you know it took me quite a, a while from there uh, I think for me, the performance element's really intrinsic to how I function as a writer. I like to read it out. Um, and, but it took me a little while from there to actually call myself a poet, you know, to think, ah, I'm a poet. And, and sometimes that feels like it's something that you discover about yourself, like it's your identity that you didn't know. And I think as a writer, that's very relevant. It's like, you learn more and more about your, you, who you are through the writing. And, and, and as a poet, you know, this is what I do. And you learn about the world and the human experience. Um, but mostly you learn that as a writer, as a poet, you know, you, you look at the world in a different way and, and you, you have the tools to open the eyes of other people, I guess, connect. Um, and, 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 you know, um, I, I write in all types of jars, but I prefer poetry because of the immediacy of it. And like, it's so concise and, and you can give someone like a moment, like feel this. And they read these few lines and then you've taken them somewhere else, you know. So it sounds like you've got lots of different influences throughout your life to where you've got to yeah. now. And that brings me nicely on to the topic of your talk, which is write your own poetry manifesto. So what is a poetry manifesto and what does your talk entail? Um, I wanted to follow on from the work that I did with the Poetry Hunt. And uh, the Poetry Hunt, uh, the submission call that I wrote for it was based uh, on uh, the Situationist movement and about having art in incongruous places, but with a message. Um, and I wanted to follow up from that because I, you know, my own personal development, but also 
uh, my own reflection and you know not just myself but many many writers and poets you know over the century you know we, we always consider what it is to be a poet existing in the world you know what's our function you know how do we exist and um, you know we are in you know the the death throes of capitalism and um a, a poet if anything is pretty much the antithesis of capitalism you know we we don't write stuff so that we make money you know that just, it's never the point initially you know what i mean you know we have to live so yeah but that that's never the point so if you reflect on this you know and for me as a political you know and engaged and and you know and i have things to say this is what i write because i have things to say um uh, I wanted to um, bring that up to people to like, if they've not considered this before, what do they have to say? What What is the ground that they stand on? What's the cause that's going to take them to the streets and, and protest? You know, what is using, you know, they're poets, they have tools, they're writers, they're, they already have the language, they manipulate it. How can, what impact? You, could you have um, with your words on something that really, um, you know, you are passionate about, and it could be anything. Um, this is the, the 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 great thing about social justice and looking at a manifesto is that a manifesto is a declaration of your intention, and it's a way to say very effectively, you know, this is who I am. This is what I stand for. And, and to have an artistic statement, I think, is of uh, incredible value as an artist, you know, for your own practice and also um, to um, to carry on the work. You know, what part of the conversation are you in? You know, where is it that you want to make an impact? You know, is it climate justice? You know, is it, um, you know, um, a victim of domestic abuse you know is it i don't know uh, homeless people is it you know what what gets you out you know and angry and you want to say stuff so i'm hoping the workshop will help people to not only find those things out about themselves but also write a very little template of what it could be so it sounds like it's almost uh, the foundations of or the values of who you are as an artist or writer and then mm. that comes out in your writing so once you've understood what your i suppose mission statement in corporate yes works, and then that's how I mean, in corporate speak you know that's where it would be your vision or your mission statement but as artists we call it a manifesto and and there's very strong you know um definitely in the talk i will be talking a bit more about the situationist and the work that they did and um the 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 work that's currently being done in town you know and in many other places where people put words in various places you know for everybody to read or on the internet or wherever so it sounds like it's um, it, it's 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 so important for everybody, whether you're a poet or a writer, artist, creative, to have this manifesto, this mission statement. Um, you know, before you even start work, because it grounds you. I suppose you know, as a writer myself, you know, when I'm writing, you kind of lose track of you know, because you follow the character, you follow the plot, and sometimes mm. it has a different tangent. So to have that state, if, if it's like on a post-it note behind you on the wall or on your computer, that you keep going back to it to remind you of, of why you're doing what you do. You know, like um, at the core, you know, you, you start writing because you have a story to tell. And, and, and um, you can find so many ways to tell that story. So this is the beauty of writing, isn't it? You know, and what's the story that you want to tell? Um, I, I, um, I didn't start out as a poet and a writer knowing this. You know, it's taken me like many years of like writing and reflection. And um, also, I was influenced by uh, Zena Edwards, uh, who's a poet and activist. Um, um, does absolutely brilliant stuff. And I attended one of her workshops, which she talked about discovering your voice through your cause and and that um not only 
using you know what's the cause that you know makes you um want to write but also how are you gonna um prioritize your time accordingly and and she suggested that you know about 20 percent of your writing should be for that and potentially with like charitable work associated with it to keep fresh with what the cause you're supporting through your writing does i think that's a very interesting idea you know but you gotta start somewhere and starting with like knowing what it is that you want yeah and i think you know kind of listening to you talk i think it's going to be a very emotional because you have to dig really deep down into yourself to really understand the causes that you want to fight for i suppose you know in or, or the messages that you want to get across so I think this is going to be a, a fascinating uh, talk to, to listen to you, particularly, Miriam. Um, and then as a takeaway, having that or, or maybe going to wait and really thinking deeply about what your manifesto is going to be. Yeah, that's it. And um, I, I'm hoping that it will, you know, develop into, I don't know. Um, I, I, um, I did a version of this workshop with a year nine group uh, uh, a few weeks back. And uh, it was one of the first sessions that I did in the course of several. And it totally fired them up. Um, and, and their writing like grew massively as a result of just a thinking session, you know? Um, and uh, I can't wait to see what happens with the writing of the people who attend, you know, like, I'm always just delighted reading poetry. Like, if I could get paid just to read poetry, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, and living that way, I'd do that. That would be great for me. Well, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. I think this is going to be uh going to be brilliant so thank you so much for um, being involved in the writing festival again um miriam so miriam's talk write your poetry manifesto is at 2 30 p.m on saturday the 27th of april within the poetry hub which is going to be at the avenue shopping center um in bournemouth town center um, and we look forward to seeing you then so thank you so much miriam thank you i think thank it's going to be great i'm so excited brilliant all right take care bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.